Okay, let's click back on Riverwalk. We mentioned earlier that we're zoomed out on it. We're looking at it at approximately 16.7%, it says here on the tab. Now I can zoom in on my image and look at it at different percentages. If I get my zoom tool, which we've talked about previously, the zoom tool looks like a magnifying glass. If I select my zoom tool by clicking on the tool or clicking Z on my keyboard, I now get the tool magnifying cursor representing my tool with the plus sign by default. So if I click on my picture, each time I click, my picture is zooming in just a little bit more. And now I'm at 600%, we can start to see the grid, which tells me I'm zoomed in really far. On my options panel for my zoom tool at the top of my screen, I have the option to choose the zoom out feature, which is my magnifying glass with a minus sign. Now when I hover in my document window, if I click, you'll notice that the magnifying glass now has a minus sign on it. So now I'm zooming out. You'll also notice when I'm not where I can see the entire picture at one time, I get these bars on the right side of my screen and the bottom of my screen. One is vertical, so I can scroll up and down on my picture to pan through it, or I can scroll right and left with the horizontal bar to pan through my image. As we go across the options panel at the top, we also see four buttons, actual pixels, fit screen, fill screen, and print size. Let's click on actual pixels to see what happens. You'll notice when I click that button, I'm now zoomed in at 100%, which is larger than my document window. If I click on my untitled document, that was 100% in that document. And in the Riverwalk JPEG, this is 100%. Remember, it's the same file that I opened, but in one case I opened it, and in the other case I placed it. So my open document actually opened to the full size that the document was saved at in pixels versus placing it in an already predetermined size document. It actually shrunk it to fit in that window on that document. Okay, the fit screen button will zoom my document out so that I lose my scroll bars, the horizontal and vertical scroll bars, and it's as big as it can be where I don't have to scroll. So you can see a little bit of your non-printable region, which is the dark gray area, and then the canvas is the part with the picture. So you'll notice that we can actually see the entire image. Fill screen zooms in a little bit more than the fit screen, but now I have my scroll bars available to click and drag to pan my image. And then finally, print size. Print size takes us to 31.3% in this case, and that'll change based on the image that you're working with. But print size is always a good thing to look at before you actually print your document so that you can kind of preview what it's going to look like before you print it and decide whether or not you feel it's good enough to print and that you've made all the changes that you want to make. Okay, so we're zoomed in a little bit. Let's get our hand tool. The letter H is a quick way to get that tool, or again, clicking on it in the tools bar, and it looks like a hand. Now when I click and I drag my hand, this will quickly let me pan through my picture, drag it around so I can focus on one area over another. So if I had my zoom tool, I'm going to change this to plus sign, if I zoomed in and went to my hand tool, you can see it's a lot easier to get around my image to find a location that I want to take a look at at this zoom level. So clicking and dragging my hand, I can go left, right, up, down, I can even go diagonally. Double clicking on your hand tool is a shortcut to resize your image to fit your screen. Just like the zoom tool on our options panel, we have the same four buttons that we had for the zoom tool. Double clicking on the zoom tool will reset your image to 100%. So the hand tool will kind of shrink to fit, and the zoom tool will increase it to 100%. Another option for getting around your image, besides the hand tool, is your navigator panel. So let's click on a window, on our menu bar, and let's choose navigator. Navigator opens the navigator panel on the right-hand side of our window here, and you'll notice there's a preview of our document where we can see the entire document, and there's a orange rectangle in the middle of it. When I click and drag that rectangle, 
it moves me to that area of the picture in my document window. So I can very quickly move around my document and with the preview in the navigator panel, it helps me kind of navigate or let me know where I'm going. You'll notice that we've got a zoom tool within the navigator panel, so I can zoom in. You'll notice that my orange rectangle there is getting smaller, and again, I can still click and drag it to get around quickly. And I can also zoom out, and the rectangle gets larger until it gets so big that it matches the document window, and I really can't use the navigator window to move around my document because I can see the whole thing. You also have a zoom slider that you can click and drag to quickly change the zoom level of your document. And then again, navigate with your orange rectangle within the navigator panel. Let me double click navigator panel, the title there, to close that. And let's take a look under view, look at screen mode. Screen mode, by default here, you see the check mark is set to standard screen mode. That's where we can see everything. Let's go ahead and choose full screen mode with menu bar. You'll notice that we lost a few features on our window and we can see more of our picture. We'll go there again, view, screen mode, full screen mode. This one gives us a warning dialog box before we actually commit to it because many times I've seen students get into full screen mode by mistake, usually by pressing the F key and they don't realize they press the F key. They might have been going for a shortcut key and they accidentally pressed F and they get this mode and they kind of get confused and they get nervous and they don't know what they've done and all you have to do is press your F key to get back. So let's take a look at that again. View, screen mode, full screen mode. The warning dialog box tells us that we can use the F key or the escape key to return to standard screen mode because as we just briefly saw, when we go to full screen mode, you're gonna lose your menu and your toolbar or your tools panel and you may kind of get lost and not know what to do at that point. And a good habit to get into is pressing escape when things are kind of acting strange, you're not sure what's going on. It's a habit I've gotten into, especially when I'm helping students. I'll walk over and try pressing the escape key first to see if that fixes my problem without knowing what the student had done. And many times they don't know what they've done either to get themselves in that mess. So I'm gonna click on full screen. You'll notice now, as we saw before briefly, the panels are gone, the tools panel's gone, the menus are all gone. Now this is a good way to look at our image as big as we can see it based on the resolution of our screen and the size of our monitor to give us a good preview of what our final image will look like. Okay, I'm going to press alert F and that gets me back to normal. You'll also notice at the bottom of our tools panel there is a tool for that where you can skip through these three modes just like we saw under the view menu. And you can press alert F until you cycle back to the standard screen mode.